need you to procure something for me while you're down in Mexico. You might be able to get these in the United States. I might be wrong. Okay. I need a Claymore. Maybe a couple. I, I, wow. <laughs> that was uh, not what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they have flea markets around here. They probably have those. What do you, uh, what do you need one for? So, Paul, you may remember I've planted some trees in my backyard, had some issues with arborvitaes and all that. Mm -hmm. a, a deer last night came through uh, and destroyed one of them and trampled over another arborvitae. And so I'm deciding that murder is the appropriate option here. Hmm. Yeah. And I think Claymore would be an effective way to remove a deer. <laughs> yep. You used to be watching TV one night, you hear an explosion. Your wife's like, what's that? And you're like, it's all good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Might need to clean the windows a little bit, but um, yeah. <laughs> just make sure it's facing the right direction, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. I'm sorry. Anyways, um, to very little surprise, Activision titles won't be coming to Game Pass before 2024. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I that's a little bit of a surprise to me, I guess, but. Um, I, I think one of the things people maybe don't appreciate is that when there's an acquisition like this, they can't pollute together, mm -hmm. you know, about how things are going to go after the acquisition goes through. And there are really good, there are probably legal reasons for this, but they're also very good kind of strategy reasons. I mean, it doesn't really make sense for either company to, especially in this case, because it was very uncertain for such a long time to kind of reveal everything, mm -hmm. you know. Um, because if it fell apart, then now what, you know, I mean, you're kind of left hanging there. So yeah, it's still, it's, I don't know what the process is, obviously who would, but I, you know, when they purchased Bethesda, there was an instant drop of back catalog stuff. And I have a hard time believing they couldn't get this done, but I guess they're not getting this done. So. It probably makes sense for them. They're right in the middle of the beginning of the holiday season yep. and, Call of Duty sales are happening, and you just don't want to screw around. I mean, what what if any impact would it be if Microsoft or if, yeah Microsoft released every single Call of Duty game except for the new one to Game Pass right now? Like, I mean, it might kill it, right? I'm sure that's would, part it, of it. Yeah, yeah, you know, so, yeah. Because I, I haven't I, given it, them my money yet, but I will if you call it. And yeah. not that I was expecting it to be in the Game Pass before the holiday, but. You know, Again, I don't know what I was expecting, but again, yeah. but part this is part of the strategy thing. This is not what they talked about in the interview that get led to this information at all. But mm -hmm. you know, they you kind of casually throw out like, like this is some kind of a process, and it's like, is it? I mean, like I, I, I don't think it would have been that hard, but I think there are strategic reasons for not doing it. The other that's my guess. Quasi big news, not related to gaming, mm -hmm. but Amazon has committed. Uh, more yeah. than one billion dollars over five years to secure one million plus Microsoft 365 seats. Yeah, for what is my question? No, I mean literally. Like, yeah, uh, you mean it can't be for internal use? There, this is going to be for what is this for? <laughs> like, they're you know, in other words, this is something they're going to resell to customers or something. Like, what? Is, what is? I don't this? know. I think they might. They, I don't know. Like, we'll find they don't out. Have a million still... employees? Or, uh, no, uh, that need. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, they have a million. No. Do they? Do they have a million employees that could need Microsoft 365? I mean, aren't most of their employees truck drivers and such? Well, a lot of them are like retail warehouse okay. workers for sure. I know, but would they need it for something? Bob know. down we'll in find the, out. you know, and on the factory floor needs a you know access to Microsoft Word for some reason. It might it might be a, like a frontline worker type situation. I yeah, guess that would be my guess. But uh, yeah, whatever. It's a billion. I mean, a billion bucks is a billion bucks. I don't know. Yeah. I, I guess uh, if anyone could name five Amazon products that target the enterprise and are productivity focused, good luck to you, because I don't think anyone could. And uh, I guess whatever it is, it's not doing well enough that they can't even use their own stuff internally. They have to turn to Microsoft. So yeah, I was about to say the real interesting thing here is for a while they were trying to roll their own. They had a product called Chime, I think, which was like an mm -hmm. internal chat communication tool or whatever. Yep. And yep other things and uh clear. there was a period of, yeah i'm sorry I, there's a period of time where i think everyone was trying to emulate microsoft 365 right like zoom actually has an announcement recently they're doing stuff that in, along these lines i mean dropbox i think like didn't they have paper and things like yeah, they, they've all they've like all that. sort of dabbled in this right um amazon 
it's one of the you know, biggest companies on earth. I mean, if they can't do it, I guess the decision was Google versus Microsoft at this point. But yeah, see, that's that's to me is what's more in, well, also partially, partially interesting. Right. I think it's very interesting that to what you just said that if Amazon was truly trying to compete, and they're like, look, it just doesn't make sense for us to do this. We right. we're spending so much money just maintaining this that nobody's buying it. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. Anyway, I, I a million. I mean, a million. It was a million seats. Was that the number? Yeah, no, what was one the, million, million plus seats? according to the internal document? Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Whenever that gets announced, that's a that's a big deal for Microsoft. Right. So that's five years. So that's what two hundred fifty million a year or two hundred million a year. It's uh, if it literally is a million seats, this is the biggest deal in Microsoft's, you know, Microsoft 365 history. I mean, it's, I, this is unprecedented, isn't yeah. it? I mean, I, unless I'm missing something, oh, maybe not. I don't know. I yeah. don't really know. There's no way they have, a, they need a million actual seats. Yeah. I mean, it seems, I mean, a million. I wonder. I know. I, I'm just, it's confusing. The numbers are so confusing. It makes me doubt everything. I, I don't even know how to. It makes me wonder if they're doing something where they're going to have like a virtual desktop. That's what I was getting at. Like a, that's what I meant by, yeah. by reselling to guys. Like that's, that's what I was getting at because they do have this cloud infrastructure thing you may have heard of and uh, they do. Yep. People, uh, companies rather host Microsoft 365 in it. I, I think, right? Mm -hmm. um, or can, right? Or Windows, certainly. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I really I have no idea. Maybe it, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't understand this. What is the installed base of Microsoft 365 commercial? Do we know? Um, I mean, the installed base of the commercial uh, consumer version is in the tens of millions. It's 70 million less, yeah, something, something like, that. like that. So the commercial one is probably in the mid you know, two to 500 million range, Maybe. something in there. <clears throat> so in that, I guess in that scope, a million is just a little bump. I don't know. It just seems like a lot. It does seem like a lot. It's too early in the morning for me to think about this stuff. I can't even, I have no command of these facts. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The other uh, interesting number that has come out too, which I'm pretty sure is accurate based on my own uh Insider sources. Uh, Windows Central, mm -hmm. actually, Zach was saying that Windows 11 has 400 million plus, I think it's monthly active devices. That number is what I've yeah. been hearing too for a while, actually. And yeah, so, so it's hard it to say, like, that... is that good? Microsoft, according to their documentation, says that is good, but like. Okay, so with the understanding that Microsoft is the one that arbitrarily limited the number of right. people who could upgrade. Is it good or not? I mean, given that its predecessor is so good, unlike Windows 10's predecessor, given that businesses are on their own cycle and it just doesn't coincide with Windows 11's release, given that the pandemic ended and all of a sudden everything went to shit and Windows 11 released in that and didn't was never going to move the needle on PC sales anyway. There's all these caveats, but, you know, Microsoft overly aggressively pushed the windows 10 upgrade if you recall got into some trouble for that mm -hmm. um you know uh terry myerson set that one billion goal within two to three years and then we later learned that was tied to his compensation and that he cheated and those numbers were kind of bogus anyway at the time maybe i don't know but windows 10 hit 400 million a lot faster than windows 11 and if you look at uh, windows 10 like you go to stackhunter.com and look at the graph um Two years in, Windows 7 was still the best selling operating or the best most used operating system compared to Windows 10. But the gap two years into Windows 10, I should say, the gap was much I mean, it was, you know, narrowing, right? Mm -hmm. um, the gap between Windows 10 and 11 today is humongous and is not that different than it was two years ago, by the way. <laughs> not at all. I mean, um, I'm sorry, I should say no, of course, the gap was different. The Windows 10 usage, if you will, was not that different than it is today. So there's, so, there's a lot of ways of looking at this. But Windows 10 is going to have a, a support problem in a couple of years, and that's going to be a very interesting circumstance. And um, Windows 11 may never achieve any mass usage. Uh, that, that 400 million is mass. I mean, but in the scope of Windows, because we think Windows 12 is coming. I mean, how right. high is it going to get? Is it? It's never going to do what Windows 10 did. It's never going to do what Windows 7 did. Um, 
There are over a billion computers right now still using Windows 10. That's the other half of that number, by the way. If we believe that 1.4 billion is the number, that means 1 billion are still using Windows 10 because there's nothing else uh, of any meaningful usage share. So that's incredible. Five, what are we, eight, what are, how many years are we? Eight years, right? Mm -hmm. 2015 to, yeah, 2023, eight years. This thing still has a billion users? That's not bad. It's not bad. It's a problem is what it is. It's going to be a problem. But because we're effectively <laughs> as, l making the assumption that if Microsoft sticks to historical patterns, Windows yep. 12 will be launching like right about now in a year from now. A year from now, yeah. Yep. yep. Which means that yep. there's then one year between Windows 12's availability and when Windows 10's official support for yep. the vast majority of those devices comes to an end. That's not enough years. Um, even nope. if you look at Windows 11 to Windows 10, think about it's two years ago. So right now we're two years away from the end of Windows 10 support, right? Two years? That's the number? Right? Yeah, I believe it's 2025. 2025. So two years ago, that was it was four years. That's how much time Windows 10 users had to think about upgrading or whatever, moving on. Um, next year, or two, in, next year when Windows 12 comes, it will only be one year. That's a big difference. Um, you know, when Windows 10 arrived, I mean, Windows 8 was only three years old. Windows 7 was six years old. So there's still four years um, from like a mass use operating system. And they still didn't hit it. They had to extend support. And then granted, they charge for it. But I think that's the model right there. It's like the amount of time you have left in the life cycle compared to the release of the new operating system. I, I And then the size of the user base. And the Windows 7, though, like I said, you can look at this. You can look this up. It's very easy to see. Uh, Windows 7 usage went down fairly steadily. Windows 10 usage has not. And that is perhaps perhaps historically significant. I, Windows XP probably did the same thing, too, actually. But I don't have that data in my head. But um, I think they're going to have to extend it. I just, mm -hmm. I just have a hard time understanding how that doesn't happen. We'll see. I don't know. It doesn't matter that new PCs are coming out. So this is the thing. Like these these businesses will all buy new PCs, but they're going to downgrade them, right? I mean, and I, I that's what they're doing right now. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah, it's I, Windows like, Seven my, all over again, right? I, I think so. I, that's the model. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We all we Which can do is, is wait and see at this point because hey, uh, time is ticking, and. If your device doesn't support Windows 11, sure as heck is not going to support Windows 12 unless they go backwards and spec list, no, which dude, they're not going to no, do. No way. If anything, they move forward. That's good. That's actually the real concern. And if they do at that point, you're like, you're just doing this on purpose now. So right. th th then you have to extend support for Windows 10. That then it becomes okay. I, and by the way, just for whatever it's worth, I, a Windows license is a Windows license. You know, who cares? These companies are on software assurance or whatever it's called right. these days, and they're paying every month anyway. Microsoft in some ways doesn't care what they're running as long as they're getting paid, but they do for security reasons, et cetera, et cetera. And also when something new comes out, like Windows 10 was like kind of a new look kind of a thing mm -hmm. compared to Windows 7, right? A lot of companies still running Windows 7. Windows 7 by 2015, 2018 looked really antiquated, didn't it? Um, Windows 10 today to me looks very antiquated and it's not quite as old. I mean, it still has that Windows phone, sharp edge yep. tiles and... It, it, it's a very, um, it's of its age, right? And it, it does, and I don't think it ages well. I don't think this is a, a look that you know feels modern or whatever. I mean, Windows 11, for whatever problems people have with it, at least looks friendly and you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, modern maybe for lack of a better term. Um, I don't, I, I mean, from Microsoft's perspective, maybe that's a problem, but. You know, they're designing apps that look like Windows 11. They can run on Windows 10, but do they look weird on Windows 10? I don't, I don't know. It's a mishmash.